Hello, so I'm Victoria and I'm going to be going through some parables. So we are going to look at some parables that we see in the Bible. We are going to read through them and then we're going, I'm going to explain them. And then we're going to have a craft that will hopefully help us to remember them. So we're going to look at what parables are and why, um, and why Jesus used them. So... Jesus told parables to make complicated things simple. We probably know a couple of parables that are not from the Bible. For example, the boy who cried wolf or the hare and the tortoise. The hare and the tortoise teaches us that doing things really, really quickly doesn't mean that it is always good and that sometimes taking your time is better. The boy who cried wolf teaches us not to lie because if we do, People may not believe us when we are really telling the truth. These stories can help us to understand complicated things about how to live or hard to understand things about God in the world. Unlike the parables that I had just mentioned, so the hare and the tortoise and the boy who cried wolf, we are going to look at some parables that are from the Bible that Jesus told his followers. You can read along too with me from the Bible, but if you don't have a Bible, um, there are plenty that your parents or carers could get online for free, or even they could get an app if you'd like to read along, but only if you want to. So I'm going to read the parable called The Sower from a book in the New Testament called Matthew. And I'm gonna look at chapter 13, verses three to nine. So it says, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on a footpath and birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rocks. These seeds sprouted up quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon withered under the hot sun and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds that fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil, which is really good soil. And they sprouted up and produced a, cop, a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much that was planted. Anyone who has ears, let them hear and understand. So this parable really confused Jesus' followers. So they asked him to explain it. And this is what he said. He said that the seeds, like this one, that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom of God. So that means here's the message about Jesus and the salvation that he brings. And they don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches it snatches the seeds away that were planted in their hearts. So that understanding of it is snatched away. And then the second seed represents those who, um, whose seeds fall on the rocky path. So like this. So this re represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, it doesn't last long and they fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing in God's word. So this represents people who hear about Jesus, but then maybe their friends don't like that they um, trust and love Jesus. So as a result, they kind of fall away and they choose not to believe in him and choose not to follow him. And the third one um, is the seed that fell amongst thorns, like this little one. So we've got our little plant here, and we've got the big thorns that are choking it out. So the seed that fell among thorns represents those who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of life and the lures of wealth, so no fruit is produced. So this represents those people who... Um, hear the message about Jesus but the things of the world like money and other things that are in the world they choose over Jesus so this represents them being choked out 
And then finally, we've got the fourth soil. So, the seed that fell amongst good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest 30, 60, or even 100 times as much that had been planted. So a harvest sometimes in the Bible is a word that is used to mean good things. So it means that people who hear God's word, who hears the message about Jesus, who accept it, and who as a result do good things and love Jesus and live for him as a result of it. And that represents the seed in good soil. So we are going to learn how to make this. So hopefully this will help us remember each soil because I know it can be a bit confusing. So I'm going to show you how to make this and hopefully it will help us to remember the story. So for, day, for today's craft, you're going to need an A4 piece of paper, or any paper really, and some colouring pens or pencils or crayons. So, we are going to make a picture that can help us remember the parable of the sower. So, we're going to fold our piece of paper in half like this. If it's a bit fiddly, see if you can get a parent or carer to help you. Okay, so we folded it in half. Now we're gonna fold it again in half like this. So you'll have a little rectangle shape like this. And then we're gonna unfold it. So we have four sections. And in each one of these sections, we're gonna draw a different bit of soil like we learned from our story. So we are going to draw a line across here. So this is going to be the sky and this is going to be the soil. So if we remember our first piece of soil, there was a bird that came and ate up the seed. So I'm going to draw a little bird that's pecking away at the seeds. So we've got a little bird here that's gonna be pecking away at the seeds. I'm, and then we'll draw the little seeds here. So here are the seeds. So we've got our little bird that's pecking away at the seeds. And I'm just gonna put in a little sun. Okie dokie, so that's our first bit of the soil finished. And then the second one, if we remember, the seeds couldn't grow because there were lots of rocks that were choking out the seeds. So we're going to draw some rocks like this. Okay. Now we're going to draw in our seed that's going to be right here. And we're going to put in some roots. But these roots aren't going to be very big because of all the rocks the plant can grow. So we're going to have some very small roots. Then we're going to draw the little plant. It's not a very big plant because it didn't have what it needed to grow. Okay, so this is our second picture done. 
And then our next one is going to be the plant that couldn't grow because there were lots of thorns around. So we're going to do another little plant that's quite small. We're going to put in our little seed like we did before. And the small roots. And we're going to draw some big thorn plants that are going to be crowding over the other plant. Okay, and finally, we are going to draw our nice, healthy plant that's able to get all the nutrients it needs. So we are going to draw a nice, big, healthy plant. So we've got a nice, big, healthy plant. And we're going to put in the seed here so we can see the seed there. And we're going to do some really big and nice roots because this plant got everything it needed. So we've got our nice healthy plant here. And on my plant, I'm gonna make it a flower because I think flowers are pretty. So. So we've got a nice flower, I'll put in the sun. So here you go, so you've got all three soils. You've got the one where the bird came and ate up all the seeds, you've got the one where the rocks meant that it couldn't grow. Then you've got the big plants that were choking out the little plant. And then you've got the healthy plant at the end that had all, everything it needed to grow. So hopefully, I know this was maybe a little bit complicated, but hopefully this will help us remember the story of the sower, or rather the parable of the sower. So I am just gonna finish by praying. If you want to make this prayer your prayer, just say amen at the end if you would like. So Father, thank you that we get to learn more about you from the Bible, your word. And I pray that you'd help us to understand um, the parable about the sower and the seed and how this should affect our lives, Lord Jesus. I pray in your name, amen.